Good morning, everyone, and happy holidays. Um, even though I'm not feeling well myself emotionally, I'm going to get up and go job hunting today, and I just want to let all my YouTubers know that even if it's the middle of the night and you need to contact me, um, I will post my number. I know it's it's crazy, but... Um, or just, you know, like email me if something's going on. Um, I'm probably going to go to school tonight. I've been out of school for a while, and hopefully... We didn't go on um, winter break yet. I think today and maybe next week is the last week because we got to go on winter break soon um, if we're not already on there. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to celebrate you guys um, the other day because, you know, um, I appreciate you and all the suffering that us Christians and other people have gone through during COVID. We really need a good support system because... COVID was really hard on a lot of people that have mental illness and I have battled with it since I was a kid because I was raped in high school and I was not healed from it and then people can tell you're vulnerable and they might rape you again, you know, so it's just like if you're vulnerable, like, you know, like if you're a victim of domestic violence, sometimes you'll be another victim of domestic violence and another one. I was a three-time victim of domestic violence. I was a three-time survivor of rape, you know, in high school. And it's, it's not easy because we don't even know we were raped. We don't know what happened, you know, like, and we're self-medicating on all this stuff and we're, you know, trying to figure out, you know, why, you know, people reject us or why, you know, people, um, you know, because it's, because we're not healed, you know, we've gone through so much damage. Like I got brutalized by three different policing agencies in California and I finally found a lawyer and I have to come up with the consultation fees. So today is a job hunting day, even though I'm with my same company, but we don't have any work until the CES show, which is coming up at the end of um, this month, uh, December. So mid December, like end December, but I can't wait. I need money now. You know, I'm tired of being home, being depressed. I mean, I could just lay up. I got food. They give me food at my church. They give, I got food stamps. I don't even have to go out and do any of this. But my dog's going to be in the yard today. <laughs> I was like, out you go. I'll put a little blanket out there and a pillow and she should be fine, you know, because she has all her needs met, you know. And I told one of my roommates if they see her out there, they can bring her in, you know. But I'm not going to, um, you know, revolve around a dog because she's very spoiled. She's very needy and she has a big, beautiful yard and it's a nice day. And even if she's out there all night, oh, well, you know, she's got a blanket, she's got a pillow. I, I can't, I can't, you know. I can only do so much. I have, I, I, my workouts were shot because of her and poor roommates and, uh, bad living conditions. And I'm just, I, you know, I was cleaning up, you know, other people's dogs mess in the house and it was horrible. Like I literally went to H and I didn't know why I was like, you know, I had roommate after roommate that were bad. And then, you know, I accepted my kid, my friend's kid in and she brought some abusive guy that was verbally abusing me and said that he was just being rude, you know, saying that I ate all his food stamps when he didn't even put the whole hundred dollars in there. He was lying. He was like on drugs and they were bringing all these drug addicts to my house, even though I just got rid of that. So then they blamed me for their phone being stolen. And I was like, I told you not to invite nobody over and you did that. That's not my fault. So I had to leave my own spot, which was a nice spot that I got for myself. And we, I had a nice, decent roommate who like switcher sided on me just because I didn't want to marry him or be in a sexual relationship after a while. It was just, you know, it was just like whatever, you know. So um, thank you guys for supporting my channel because I don't do it just to vent my feelings or my problems. I do it to help others too, to let them know that, you know, Life is surreal, but, you know, if you just stay focused, God will start pouring in the blessings. Like, today I might come home with a job, and I might start tomorrow. You never know. Like, I mean, God is real. God is good. And uh, hopefully I'll have a good testimony when I get back. I just wanted to encourage you guys that no matter what you're going through, we have all suffered through COVID. We have all suffered. You know, it, you know, wearing a mask, and I couldn't even breathe with that thing on because I have severe sleep apnea. And I could barely breathe as it is, you know, but I mean, I breathe good, but I mean, you know, like self-medicating with weed and just, uh, you know, trying to cover up the pain of all the stuff that we've gone through. My family, you know, uh, just tried to black sheet me 
and I know there was envious, you know, family members that have been envious, you know, but it's okay. I mean, that's sibling rivalry. Um, my mother-in-law told me one time, she said, I started, I'm starting to ramble. She said, like, I never knew my sister was jealous of me. And she told, her sister told her, yeah, I've always been jealous of you. Like, it's okay. You know, we're not always going to like everybody. We're not always going to, we're, you know, we're, we're going to feel like, you know, if, because I had special needs, you know, during high school, you know, I was always special needs. So she shouldn't get upset. She should embrace me as a sister and get over the chip on her shoulder. And, and nobody should be gossiping about their family members because at the end of the day, who's there for you? Your family. So nobody should be saying anything bad um, unless they feel some type of way. Like I felt strongly about, you know, I didn't want my grandma in a, a convalescent home, you know, but I couldn't take care of her. And maybe my mom couldn't because she's a victim of domestic violence. And she cried to me one day and she says, I'm really sorry for how we have treated you. You know, and she apologized and I accept my mom's apology and I apologize to her. I mean, I literally cussed her out on YouTube and that's okay. You know, that's okay. Any way that we have to vent, any way that whatever works, if it works, okay. You know, because other people see that and they're like, hey, I'm not the only one that has a family like that. Or I'm not the only one going through this. Or, you know, if you need me, I don't care if it's in the middle of the night. You could, you know, and I'm suffering mental damage. I used to be a student. I used to be able to go on the computer now I have a mental block against computer stuff and it's very hard for me to uh, to apply for jobs it's very hard for me to do computers because I was severely traumatized by Santa Clara County and I am going to come back on them and I don't care how long it takes because kidnapping has no statute of limitations and I know I'm not that bad of a mom to go 10 years without my kids because they funneled over 50 grand and they're doing state fraud so it was just that God wanted me to go to that county and and Put that county on blast and i'm still going to put them on blast i'm going to put them on blast as much as i can with everybody i talk to and i don't care if they want to hear my story or not <laughs> like no i'm just kidding no but really i mean they need to be put on blast and we need awareness for these corrupted counties that are just brutalizing the public when they have no business doing that if we go to them for a parenting class we should be able to take it without being like illegally searched and seizured of our home and kidnapping our kids from the school for the weekend and bringing them back and they're screaming and ripping them from their emotional support bed and totally traumatizing me where I had to quit my job and become a caregiver for my children and put Dia on SSI. They disabled my daughter and they also gravely disabled Diamond and now they cut Dia off her SSI and they want to sweep everything under a rug. But I'm sorry, you're not going to sweep nothing under a rug. You want to cover your butt, but you're not going to cover it because it's already, I've got evidence. I've got a sheriff exam on my home and my kids. I've got medical files to prove I'm a good mom. I don't medically neglect my children. You know, I've got, um, you know, the transportation department wasn't picking up my kid and they tried to say that my kid was tardy and late. And those tardies and lates are excused when you have a, a child that's in counseling and that's disabled. I had two special needs children and those are excused because they kept my kid out of school more than I did. My daughter didn't even get to graduate because of them. If my daughter was with me, she, she would have graduated. So I am, you know, no child left behind, but the U.S. Department of Civil Rights did nothing. You know, and I'm going to keep putting everybody on blast who did this to me and my family, and I'm not going to quit, and I'm not going to give up because I am a mama bear. I know I was a good mom. I raised my kids all in the church where they were learning fine motor skills and cutting pictures out about Jesus, and you're going to tell me I'm a bad mom? They were medically seen. Their doctor referred me to child find to get them diagnosed because he believed they had developmental disabilities. And then later they did. They found out they did, you know, and I took them and I got them tested.